How's it going, everybody? Corbin here from Zoco Marketing. I am excited for today's video. Today, we are talking about five tips on how to go viral in Pinterest this year. So we're going to be talking about some very new kind of strategies that I've been implementing and seeing a lot of success with. And to show you that uh, this isn't something that I just show people or uh, that I don't know what I'm talking about, I guess, is I wanted to go through my Pinterest account and show you a couple of the videos that I've had. So as you see here, one of this latest one, 800,000 views. This one, 5 million views. Um, over here, 1 million views, uh, 300,000 views, um, 2 million views, uh, 2 million, and it goes on and on and on um, as we kind of scroll through here. So a lot of things that I've been trying new that I've been seeing a lot of success with, and it's helped me to grow this account. Some people may be saying, well, Corbin, it's because you have 26,000 followers. Well, I can tell you a year ago, I had exactly zero. So this was a brand new account a year ago. And of course, everybody's got to start from somewhere. And now that I do have some traction on Pinterest, I'm not going to lie, it is a little bit easier to go viral. But I do want to teach you the foundations and the steps that I started to take to start growing this audience and to start um, growing my Pinterest account. So let's jump right in the reasons why you're here. And this is going to be a very actionable video. Hopefully you get a lot of value from it. And as a result, please, if you do find value in the value in the video today, please don't forget to subscribe. It does mean the world to me, uh, help to grow this small YouTube channel that I have today. Let's jump right in. The first tip that I have is to not ignore your analytics when you're inside of Pinterest. Now we're gonna jump into analytics. I'm gonna show you some actual things that you can kind of pull through, pull from and glean from your analytics. So as we go inside of here, and of course, if you're a new account, then you just need to start posting and figure this stuff out. But you're gonna wanna figure out when the best time for you to post on Pinterest is and uh, what essentially the hour or the day may be. And there's a couple of different ways to find that. So to find the best time to post on your Pinterest account, if there's not really a great way, but what I like to do is I like to come in here, last 24 hours, and you can only see this for the last 24 hours, hour by hour, unless somebody knows another way. If they do, comment down below, because I'd love to hear how you're seeing hour by hour data longer than 24 hours. But as you see, if I'm looking here inside my Pinterest account, if you're looking at this graph, when would you say the best time to post on Pinterest for me is? Um, I think it's a no brainer. As you look up here, it's probably somewhere around either 3 a.m., which may be a shocker to some people, or around uh, 1 a.m. or around 9 p.m. For for whatever reason, my account just get, gets in the last 24 hours got less engagement in, around uh, 8 a.m., 9 a.m., and 10 a.m. Also, it is important to note that this is in UTC. Note the time zone that you're in. So this is UTC, which is a different time zone that I actually am in. So if it's eight o'clock at night right here, right now, it's actually 2 a.m. according to this graph. So keep that in mind as you're looking through this. I'm not sure why my graph is, or the time zones are the way they are. I probably need to go through and change something in my settings, but make sure you're in the right time zone when you're going through and looking at this as well. Now this is impressions. If we go and look at actual like pin clicks or different things like that, you'll notice that the pattern kind of stays very true. Where you're getting the most impressions is where you're gonna be in the most posts. So that is the number one tip I have to say is don't ignore your analytics. Check to see which times actually people are, are interacting with your pins and when to post. So for me, I like to post actually later towards the day. I like to schedule those posts um, and kind of bring them you know, in the 3 a.m., 10 a.m., or sorry, 10 p.m., whatever it may be. Now, on top of that also is figuring out which, what the best days are for you to post on Pinterest. Now, I do like to post every day, but if you're somebody who likes to maybe post once or two or once or twice every week, then you need to start paying attention to when the best days for you to post are. Now, this is gonna vary day by day, but I like to come through in here and kind of see when I have peaks in my data. And uh, right now, this doesn't show us like a, a whole lot of trends, but I recommend you to come through and kind of check this out and see when the best days are for you to pin as well. So that is tip number one. Tip number two, now this should go without saying, but the tip number two is kind of a gimme. It's to create high quality images. And when you're creating those high quality images, optimize the keywords that you want people to search for. Now I have a full video on Pinterest SEO and this video is a little bit separate from SEO. So I don't want to dive too much into it. So if you want to learn more about Pinterest SEO and how to rank your pins, number one, check out that video down below. But to summarize that is you want to have obviously high quality images or videos and then inside of those images and videos, make sure that you're having thick, bold text, calls to action for people, and making sure that they know exactly what the pin's about and it's appealing to them. And along that same lines is you wanna make sure you're, you're posting what's called fresh pins. For those of you who haven't heard of fresh pins, it's actually very simple, or it's, it's actually pretty simple. It's posting new content. Essentially, with Pinterest, you used to be able to go through and just take that same pin and post it you know, 10 times or whatever it may be, and then another month, post it a couple other times as well. Pinterest is moving away, to, away from that, and now they want people with, they want pins that are fresh, they're new, new ideas being posted. Now, in order to get around that, if you only have limited content, is I do like to take my pins and make maybe three or four or variants of them, maybe changing up the text, maybe changing up the title, whatever it may be, and posting those to make 
quote unquote fresh pins. And it's also another way for you to figure out what works well for your audience. So I recommend going that route, making sure that you're optimizing for those fresh pins and, and creating different variants of your pins. So that wraps up pin number two. Like I said, if you want to learn more about Pinterest SEO, check out the link down below. Now let's go into tip number three. Here in analytics is where you can find tip number three. Now, this is something that a lot of people overlook, and that is make sure that you're pinning to your most popular boards first when possible. And when I say when possible, I mean is when your boards are relevant to whatever you're posting inside of there. As you can see, I like to go through and look at this very often to see which one of my boards are already getting at a good organic reach. That way, when I post my pins inside of there, it just gives them more of a chance that they're going to go viral and get more eyeballs, more interactions and tell Pinterest, yes, I need to push this out to more people. So I come in here to my top boards and I'll go through and look. So if I have anything that's related to DIY house projects, it goes into this board first because it gets the most engagement by far. And then I as you can see here with, with five, five million impressions, this one has a million impressions. And so I go through and I categorize and I find out which, what my pin is about and whatever it may be, I'll go through and create a board for that and make sure that it has the highest impression rate. Obviously, if you are just getting started off, some of your boards might not have as much traction, but that's also why you check out my SEO video down below on how to build boards and grow those as well. So you start having this foundation to continue just get momentum on your side, but make sure that when you have that momentum, you're taking advantage of it and posting in your top boards first and then repinning that pin everywhere else as well. Now, tip number four might be the actually most important tip that I have for you today, and that is to take advantage of Pinterest's new features. Whenever Pinterest comes out with a new format of pins, go and take advantage of that opportunity. And let me show you what I mean. Pinterest recently came out with, with something called Pinterest Idea Pins. And if we go through and we look at my analytics and you see where most of my engagement and growth is coming from, we're gonna come over here and we're gonna go to uh, split. Instead of doing no split, we're gonna do by source. And you'll see just the power of these, oh, sorry, not source, um, I want format. You'll see the power of these idea pins right now and taking advantage of them. Now, I know that these aren't currently available in every country. I know that for sure they're in the United States, Canada, and uh, other places as well. But you'll have to go through and check for your country when they might be coming out. But once they do, take advantage of these right away because you can see here. So here's my normal. The purple is normal video ads, video pin. The green is standard. And then the orange is product. And, but as you can see up here at the top, these idea pins are absolutely crushing it right now. If you are not taking advantage of idea pins, go and do it right now. This is the number one thing I want you to take away from this video is go take advantage of idea pins. Cause you can see just the engagement, the pin clicks as we go through and impressions. This is the easiest way right now to go viral inside of Pinterest. Now I want to talk a little bit more about these idea pins and how to use them how to uh, actually create them and how I get ideas for my idea pin. So let's jump into that. So we're gonna come back over here to my home. And as you can see, all, most of these pins that are going super viral is because of these idea pins. These top ones up here, these are all of my, as you can see, your idea pins right here. These are going crazy right now. Once you kind of get one going, then the traction for the other ones, it's the same thing. Once you get one going, then it just kind of gets pushed out to more and more people. So how you create these is you just come over here to any other thing, or just like you'd create any other pin, you come over here to pin, and then you'll notice that you have create pin, create ad, or create idea pin. And this is where, of course, you're gonna create those idea pins. If this isn't yet available for you, like I said, hold out just for a little bit longer, check often to see when you get access to this. But if you have access right now, start taking advantage. You're gonna come over here to create idea pin. Okay, so here we are inside of the place to create idea pins. And as you can see here, you can add up to 20 images or a video. Now I will note that I have seen more success with these when you're using videos. Pinterest is currently trying to compete with TikTok and YouTube. So I think that they are kind of pushing the videos out more at a rapid pace. And also, if you think about it, if you're inside of Pinterest and you're scrolling on your feed and you're competing against a bunch of still images and a video, people's eyes are naturally going to gravitate towards that video. So I do think if it is possible, use, use videos when possible, but I have also seen success with images as well. So in this example, I'm going to go through how to uh, upload those images into an idea pin. So you're going to come up here to upload. It's just like uploading any other pin essentially. So I'm just going to go through, I'm going to add, I'm going to grab a couple of these. This is for a board and batten wall that I just did in, in our bedroom. I'll have a YouTube video on that out soon. Actually, so we're going to hit here. We're going to grab this guy. We're going to grab maybe this one right here and then maybe the finished uh, look right there. Okay, so we're gonna open this up. It's gonna add a couple of uh, uh, pins here. And as you see, it wants me to add a title. Now I'm actually gonna add one more here and I wanna have the finished look 
open. And if you notice, if I had this as page one, that's no, that's not going to do anything for anybody, right? That's not a visually, that's not a visually capturing kind of image. But if I, instead I take this, this one up here maybe, or actually I think I like this one the most as my first image. So how to create a board and batten wall. Actually, I'm going to grab a better image. Sorry, I'm being picky here and this is just a demo, but I do want this first image to really capture people's attention. Like, okay, yeah. So I feel like this is a, a decent one to give them just enough, but uh, to capture people's attention. So we're going to come here. It says to add a title and I'm going to put how to um, make a board. Well, okay. So uh, like I said, clear, bold text. It tells people exactly what they're going to be getting. I'm going to put it right here because it looks really good on that black background. It may be covering up my black just a little bit too much, but I think that's okay. Maybe up here. No, I'm going to keep it right there. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller though so they can kind of see what's going on in the background there. And you kind of get the idea, right? You can go through and add the steps here. So for instance, here, here is like the before. Um, if I add this here, before... And I'm doing this really quick, but you'll, you'll want to do a better job. And I'm just going through the steps. So, and then here is where we'll say add boards. You know, this is where I would put add boards. And this works for every niche, by the way. This isn't just for DIY stuff. You can do this for anyone. I'm using this for the Zoco marketing Pinterest right now, and it's working really well. But anyways, you kind of get to get it. Go through and kind of lay out the steps. Once you're done there and you've adjusted these how you like, I'm going to move myself out of the way. You're going to put next. And then now we want to add this or give this a title. I like the how to make a board and batten wall. I think that's a good one. Choose board. So now this is where I know that this board, if we come back over to my Pinterest analytics, this is kind of where um, I'm going to come back and kind of just walk you through this mentally how I look at this. So before I post this, I come back over, as I mentioned, to my analytics. I come to the overview and I know that this is about accent walls in the living room, or I know that this is about an accent wall, obviously, but I want to look at my boards and see which board it would look, it would be best fit, best fitted for. That's actually like a top ranking board. So DIY house projects, that's just the catch all for me. So I think that's probably the one I'm going to go for, but let's see if there's any other more relevant ones as well. So, oh, accent walls in living room. I think this is another good one for me to go with. Uh, bathroom shiplap wouldn't be good. Kitchen island ideas. No, obviously fireplace with TV. Oh, bedroom accent wall. So this is one of my, my boards that doesn't maybe have the most amount of impressions but it's definitely a good one. But I do, because it is relevant for DIY house project, I'm going to post it in here first. Then I'm going to take that pin and I'm going to go through and post it, repost it back into this bedroom accent wall ideas. So hopefully you're getting kind of a feel on how I go through and, and look at this while I'm going through and to get the most amount of impressions possible for these pins. So we're going to go and I'm going to do the DIY house projects. Add it there. Tags. Now this is important. So these tags you want to type type in. Basically, this is an opportunity for you to give the most keywords possible to Pinterest to know what it's about. So for me, I'm going to type in accent wall. That's a good one. I'm going to type in bedroom, uh, master bedroom design. I'm going to type in bedroom again. See what else it gives me. Uh, bedroom interior bedroom makeover. That's a good one. And you kind of get the idea. So go through, you can add up to 10 of these topics. I recommend going through and adding all of them. Just for the purpose of this video, I'm going to go through and uh, keep this how it is. Make sure you let people comment. When people are commenting, it's going to get more engagement on your post. So be sure to keep that there. And then we're going to go through. And I'm actually not going to publish this yet because I haven't created the article to write for this exact post. But this is a good way for you to kind of go through and see exactly what an idea pin looks like. So we're going to exit out of here now. So that's tip number four. That's kind of a long one, but I did. it's such an important one right now that I wanted to spend a little bit more time on that. So hopefully you did find that helpful. If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe. We got one more tip for you. And the last tip is to actually how to find or to pay attention to trends. So we're going to go over here to Pinterest and I'm going to show you how to find trends. We're going to come over here to analytics and we're going to come over to trends. Come inside of the trends and type in whatever your niche may be and find trends related to that topic. So as you can see here, home decor is trending for me. So if this was if that was my niche, I would want to go through and create stuff related to home decor. Travel is trending as well. But you could do other things. Like say we come in here and we wanted to look at, um, obviously Halloween is going to be uh, trending right now because it's uh, end of September. But let's think of a different niche. Like what if we said music? So let's look at music. Um, too broad of a topic. Let's go... Um, let's say, uh, so for me, blogging, blogging tips. As you see here, you can just come through and oh, beef tips and gravy. Interesting. That is trending right now. So if you have a, a recipe that's uh, related to beef trip, beef tips and gravy, you could go through and find those trends. So I recommend whatever, uh, French tips right here, whatever that may be, whatever your niche may be, go through and find 
type in keywords related to that and find trends right now where things are going up and up. You can create boards related to that topic, create pins related to that topic, and kind of ride that wave um, as things are trending on Pinterest. And a bonus tip for you, and this might be actually the most important tip, uh, tip number six is to be consistent. I know it's a boring tip. I know it's it's not like a hack or a thing uh, to grow faster, but at the end of the day, being consistent is the best way to grow your account. Whatever your cadence may be, if it's posting weekly, if it's posting daily, if it's posting multiple times a day, whatever you can commit to, that is the best thing for you. So right now, as you're watching this video, take a note down. This is how often I want to pin to Pinterest uh, and stick to that schedule. I don't care what it is, but stick to that schedule post and you'll see results as uh, you continue to pin, make more pins. Because as you make more pins, you're only going to get better at it and the account will continue to grow. Um, so I've been talking a lot, uh, but this has been a fun video for me. I was going to tell something I'm very excited about, something that I've seen a lot of success for. Uh, Pinterest drives a lot of traffic to my website, traffic to other social platforms. So I hope to share this knowledge with you guys and you find value in it. If you are interested in Pinterest and how to grow your account, don't forget to subscribe because I do create a lot of Pinterest-related content. Thanks for watching the video today. We'll see you in the next one.